Welcome back to chapter 11. In this example, we have a helium balloon that is holding up a load mass that we're trying to figure out what it's able to hold up. So if this mass were smaller, the balloon would start to rise. If this mass were bigger, the balloon would start to fall. And so we're trying to figure out what the exact mass is that we can hold up um, in basically this equilibrium, no acceleration situation. So we're looking for this load mass, but what we also need to recognize is that this helium balloon has a volume of helium and a mass of helium that we're going to need to be aware of. We're given the radius of this sphere, and we need to know what to do with it. All right, so let's get started. First of all, we've got two objects that do look quite separate from each other, so we will go ahead and draw a free body diagram for each one. So the free body diagram of the balloon. So we'll set that one up. We have the balloon, the weight of the helium itself is going to make a difference. So that's going to be equal to the mass of helium times the acceleration of gravity, g. And the tension in the rope is going to be um, what we put here because the rope is attached, pulling downwards. And then the reason that that balloon can stay afloat at all is because there is a buoyant force pushing up, which is the density of the fluid around the outside, so that's air on the outside, times the volume displaced, that's helium in this case, times g. All right, and then we have the free body diagram of the load mass, of the hanging mass. All right, so let's set that one up. We've got the weight of the mass itself. So that's the mass that we're looking for. I'm going to call it the load. And then times g. And then we have the tension up because that rope is attached to the top, holding it upwards. Now, question. Do we need a buoyant force in this situation? It is a really important and... Um, key discussion that the lecture slides have started to have um, and that I've mentioned very briefly in the previous example, but I do want us to recognize very important here. For solid objects, I'm going to write this out because it's really important, probably important to write down in your notes as well. For solid objects in air, we can ignore the buoyant force. So let's break that down so that we recognize what's going on. Ignore the buoyant force. Note that we haven't been talking about buoyant force all throughout chapter 4 or 5. And we've been getting results that are quite reasonable. When we are talking about solid objects, that means the density is very large compared to air. And we need to recognize that this isn't true of solid objects in general. It's true of sol solid objects in air. For situations where the density is so dramatically different, thousands of times different, the buoyant force is small enough that it can be ignored. If we have a solid object underwater, like we did in example 11b, the buoyant force matters. If we have a light type of object, like this balloon in air, we're going to learn that the buoyant force matters. It's the thing holding this whole balloon up. It is only the case that solid objects in air, that buoyant force is small enough that we can ignore it. So because of that, we don't have that force here in our hanging mass. But you will see example problems in the problem set where you will have two separate buoyant forces, and it's not any trickier. You just have one extra force in the second equation of the two. We've seen how to deal with objects tied together in chapter four. It's no different if there's two different buoyant force. We just have to deal with the density times the volume times g for each one. Okay, back to what to do with this radius. 
the volume of a sphere, and this is something that is in the reference material you'll be provided with at the final exam, the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And so this radius, 70 centimeters, is 0.7 meters. This radius tells us the volume of helium that we have. We have 4 thirds times pi times 0 0.7, and just the 0 0.7 is cubed. And we can plug all of that into our calculator. We get 1.44 cubic meters. So it's quite a big balloon. And now we also want to recognize that we can look up the density of helium. That density of helium is 0 0.179 kilograms per cubic meter. And so in order to know what the mass of helium is, we can use the same thing we've seen in the two other examples, that the definition of density means we can use this comparison. When we multiply both sides by volume, we'll get 0 0.179 times 1.44. That's our mass of helium, not the mass of the load that we're looking for at the end of the problem. But what we get is 0 0.257 kilograms. So not a huge mass of helium, but still something that we need to be aware of. And so I'll circle it just like the previous two. This has showed up in the previous examples. It'll show up in all of the examples on the problem set as well. If we know one of these mass or volume values, we can use the known density to get the other. As long as we have any of the two of these three, we can find the third. Okay, but let's get back to our forces themselves. So, kind of an aside. In this example, we have the net force on the balloon is equal to zero. So we have buoyant force minus tension minus the gravity of helium is equal to zero. And down here, we have that the net forces are equal to zero. We're not accelerating. We have that the tension in the rope minus the gravity of the load mass is equal to zero. And so the tension is equal to the load mass that we're solving for times that 9.8 value. We're gonna be using that up here because we don't know what the tension is and we don't wanna have too many unknowns. Okay, so let's deal with the buoyant force. The buoyant force is the density of air since we've already used the density of helium at zero degrees Celsius, we'll go ahead and use the density of air at zero degrees Celsius, 1.29. Then the volume of helium we calculated up here is 1.44 times G is 9.8. That's equal to 18.2. So when we plug it in here, we have 18... 0.2, and then for the tension, we have minus 9.8 times the mass that we're looking for. I'm going to stop writing the word load, but it's the mass that we're able to hold up. And then for the gravity of helium, we have the mass over here, 0.257, and then times 9.8. And all of this is equal to zero. So we can add 9.8 times m, this term we can add to both sides. So now we have the 18.2 minus this term here, the 0.257 times 9.8, 2.5, and that equals 9.8 times the mass. All right, so 18.2 minus 2.5 is 15.7, that's equal to 9.8 times the mass, so we divide both sides by 9.8, and we end up with 1.6 kilograms is the mass, the load, that we can carry with this balloon. All right, so I just want to highlight because it kind of got lost in the shuffle. The buoyant force I solved for, 
That's the 18.2 that we had. The tension, let me give it a different color. The tension here came from the fact that that hanging mass is stationary and it really only has two relevant forces acting on it. So where we had tension, I plugged in the 9.8 times mass. Mass times 9.8 and 9.8 times mass are the same thing. And then for the force of gravity of the helium, that used the mass of helium that we'd gotten off here to the side times 9.8, and that's where that term came from. So I know that things kind of got shuffled a little, a little bit, and I just want to make sure that we recognize um, where all those numbers came from. So we have the buoyant force minus tension minus the force of gravity of the helium is equal to zero. I added the 9.8 mass term to both sides, which is why it showed up on the right, and then we solved for mass, the 1.6 kilograms. And so that is our final answer. That is the amount of stuff that we could attach to a balloon with a radius of 70 centimeters. And it doesn't seem like a whole lot for a balloon that looks kind of big. But one thing that's worth recognizing is that because the volume of a sphere is related to r cubed, if we double the radius of the balloon, it will actually be able to hold up not just twice the amount of stuff, but two times two times two, or eight times the amount of stuff. And very quickly, through only a few doublings of the side-to-side -side distance of the balloon, we get to a mass that can hold up people, like hot air balloons do, um, or huge amounts of cargo like zeppelins and blimps um, do and used to do more often. There are a couple of um, slides that go through that in the lectures as well. I just wanted to remind us of that thought. That's it for this example. We've got one left in the chapter and then plenty of problem set problems for you to try on your own that are similar or they push you just a little bit more using all of the same tools. And so I will see you in that last example video.